Hey y'all, what's up? I'm back here with another review today. So today, I'm going to be reviewing the very hyped up, well, oh, I'll start over, let's start it over. What's up? So I'm back here today to review the new Nike Vomero 14s. So what that means is that these are the 14th version of the Nike Vomero. So first, as always, per usual, I'm going to tell you all the technical specs of it all and let you guys know what makes the Nike Vomero 14 so much greater than the Nike Vomero 13. So first of all, I'm going to tell you the standout features that I saw from the technical aspect of it. So this Vimero actually is relatively lightweight for being a high cushion shoe. This is a high cushion neutral within the Nike um, range of shoes. So high cushion, but yet it this shoe comes in at 8.6 ounces for women and 10, no, 9.9 .9 ounces for men, I believe. I think I'm right. I'm pretty sure I'm right. Yeah. This shoe ends up coming out at 8.6 ounces for women and 9.9 .9 ounces for men. So that's a relatively lightweight shoe for a high cushion neutral because a lot of shoes you guys know range between that 9 to 10 ounce range for men normally. And for women, it'll be about that 8 to 9 ish range for women. So that's the first thing that I noticed about the shoe and the specs of it all. So it's lightweight for being a high cushion shoe. And I also realized that as I was going through everything, so cool story, they actually ended up doing the traditional Nike Air Zoom Pocket going all the way through the shoe. But they also added React Foam to here to make it more responsive, more cushion, more snappy feeling. Super awesome. It's at a 10 millimeter drop, so you're going to get more shock absorption in the heel the further you go because it's supposed to be a longer distance shoe. And so if you start to lose your form or start to heel strike for whatever reason, there's that shock absorption there. I did notice they have that same detailing, the winged out detailing as the new Pegasus. And it, I'm assuming that it's for more snack, snacky, a more snacky, no, a more snappy energy return. So just a good uh, foot transition, I'm assuming that's what that's for. And they went with that same collar as well as you can see that, um, if you can see that, there you go. So they went with that same collar as the Pegasus as well. And they did add a little bit more padding on the inside of both of the shoes. So they actually added cushioning right through here and right through here. So if you're able to make it into a Nike store or a shoe store that has the Vomero, you'll be able to feel through the inside of the collar. And it's very plush. And they also added some plushness to their tongue, which is very similar to the Pegasus tongue as well. I think... What does the Pegasus look like? Un momento. Lies, you guys. I'm out here lying to you. Oh my gosh. Okay, so no, this nothing like the Pegasus tongue. So the Pegasus tongue, totally different. Throw that guy out and do not talk about him again because right now we're talking about the Nike Vomero. Okay, so the tongue, I actually really like the tongue because it's very, there's a hair, that's gross. Um, it's very sleek, but as I was going through the product knowledge again, I was, uh, reading up that they actually added cushioning onto the tongue and so as you put your hand in here you actually do feel that cushioning which is really nice they made the thing where they cut out a piece of the bottom of the shoe because it's kind of unnecessary to have cushion there and it'll eliminate some weight and they also added their outsole with brs 1000 yeah so what that pretty much is is just rubber so it's it's the rubber the kind of rubber that they put on the bottom of their shoe to make it very durable and so that flex groove right in here is going to add a more am anatomical fit so it'll be a lot more of a sleek ride as well which 
it's really cool that Nike has all of this money and invests so much time and energy to just make their shoes good shoes. And I think that Nike gets a really bad rap for a lot of their shoes. And I'm kind of going on a rant now. But what would my videos be if I didn't go on some sort of a rant? So I think it's just really cool that Nike is able to have the excess expenditures. Is that what I would say? Like just the money, the funds to be able to look into tiny little things like, wow, we really don't need this amount of foam. Like, let's just cut it out and make our shoe more lightweight while still competing with the higher cushion shoes. To me, that's like, wow, like, you're kind of awesome. That's why I'm feeding you my money. That's why I'm being the hype princess that I was when I went and got these shoes. So per usual, like we're used to seeing with all brands, they did do the same engineered mesh and they also did their, uh, dynamic fly wire so pretty much what the fly wire enables is for the shoe to be more durable without having all these seams and stitching that will add extra weight to the shoe so the fly wire is giving you the support and the durability that you would want without having to compensate by having more weight on the shoe so that's also really cool so those are really the technical specs of it all i got it in my size six and a half per usual and so now that I let you guys know the fancy dancy stuff, let's talk about the things that I liked and the things that I didn't like about the shoe because that's always, I think, that the most informative part of the review is when it's like, wow, cool, like, I could have read that off the website, but what did you like about it? So here we go. Here we go. Okay, so anyways, um... Why am I the weirdest human being you'll ever meet in your life? I hope you never meet me in real life because I'm just as weird, if not more, uncomfortable. So, what I liked about this shoe, when I went in to go get it, because like I said, whenever I saw the opportunity within my bank account to go get the Vameros, which are priced at $140, I was just like, wow, this is awesome. I can't find them anywhere. So, given it was pre-release date, so I had to do a little bit of, hey, um, I know they come out on the first, but it wasn't a hard launch, so I felt like I was able to find them places. So there's usually soft launches or hard launches for shoes, and if it's a soft launch, then its release date is on a certain date, but some stores will carry it pre prior to that release date, and it's okay, it's sellable. And then there's a hard launch, and that means that every single place cannot and is not authorized to sell it until that release date kind of like the epic reactor the boost like they have hard launches because there's such high demand shoes but this guy didn't have that so i was just calling out places and no one had it so i was literally being like a hype princess i drove so far from my home i kind of want to add the clip i was recording how far away i was literally like oh my gosh i've never been so far from my home like why did i do this who made me think that this was okay but i still did it i'm here we're coming in through with the review and <laughs> so when i went in to get the shoe i don't know if it was just the fact that I wanted this shoe so bad or if it was that the shoe really was as good as it felt or that I was wearing you know uh, the world will really never know right the world will never know but I will say that when I first tried this shoe on I was like wow like you're comfortable like can I take you home can I take you home with me baby girl so I took her home with me and it was love at first sight loved it i walked around in it for a little bit you know kind of to break it in before i actually went on a run in it and because i hate breaking in my shoes when i as i'm running because that's just an uncomfortable situation for me and will be best avoided if i just break in the shoe prior to running in it that's that's how we solve that problem i have great problem solving skills so anyways i walked around in the shoe for a little bit and then finally the next day i went out and i ran in it and I didn't wear my insoles because I always think that putting in my insoles that I run in is kind of a biased review because who knows? Most people don't buy insoles and I'm aware of that. Like I'm aware the average person is probably not going to buy insoles. So unless you are, then you are. But 
most people buy the shoe. They expect the shoe to give them what they want. So I ran without the insole in there and I don't know why it felt so hot. Like this shoe was hot, like hot fire flamed, but not even hot fire flamed in the good way. Like it was just, my foot was burning up in here. And I felt like I didn't break it in enough. And I was like, well, maybe I didn't break it in enough. Like, I did only walk around in it for a day. Like, who knows? Like, who knows what this world might have done to me to make my foot feel so hot and uncomfortable in there. Because I was wearing the right socks. It was a chilly day. Like, all of these factors went into it where it was like, it has to be the shoe. Like, there's no way that it's my socks. There's no way. That, like, I don't know what it is. It's, it's the shoe. I either didn't break it in enough or it's just a hot shoe. I've decided it's it's just a hot shoe like I don't know why I don't want it to be a hot shoe but it is it felt very similar and you know what the cushioning on it feels really responsive here this bad guy right here feels very responsive but then back here it just is soft which some people love a very soft shoe and this is y'all know I have a very specific preference in soft so I like a firm responsive soft like that right there that's that's tea that's goals that, no that's not tea that's that's goals that's like I love that kind of a shoe but this shoe felt more like like an Asics this shoe felt like an Asics gel cumulus to me not the weight wise it didn't feel heavy but you know when you land into an a6 shoe and it just feels mushy because it's so soft that's how this guy felt to me which some people love that like do not get me wrong some people love that and if you love that then that's awesome like great for you and there's no judgment and that's just the kind of shoe you like but i don't like that kind of a shoe I do not like that and it was just confusing because the bottom felt hard like the back felt hard but this part felt soft and then so that was my first experience with it and I was like okay whatever and so then I went on another run in it and it was a little bit of a longer run I usually try to do a long run a short run and then just whatever my heart desires but I definitely tried to get in one short one long at first initially so that I'm able to really know what the difference is between the two and then I'll just take it out sporadically whatever I feel like running that's what I'll run and that's just who I am as a person so I'm just kind of like a vibes kind of gal you know living in the moment like my friend Drake once said YOLO so anyways I took it on a long run and at first it felt really good and I think that at first it was that I didn't break it in enough which that's something that you will have to put into play it's not the kind of shoe that you can just put on your feet and go on a run in it's you have to break it in a little bit so then i went on a long run and it felt comfortable not the best but i was able to get through it so i was okay with that but then at the end of my run like i don't like this heel right here like this it's not for me it's just really not for me i don't like it i want something that just like you know like goes in there but like I love the cushioning of it all but like just imagine the cushioning back here with the New Balance 1080 back like that would be that would be delicious I it's okay like I do like it and that's why I'm reviewing it because I do like it I after I went on a couple more like three mile runs in it I realized I like the shoe like it's not a bad shoe I just think that I've ran in so many shoes that I don't think I would pay $140 for it. Oh my gosh. I wouldn't pay $140 for it. But that's just me. I think that if I had, had to choose between this guy and the Pegasus, I would honestly pick the Pegasus. The only thing I didn't really like about the Pegasus was that it wasn't wide enough for me. This shoe, still not wide enough for me. And here's the thing. Here's the reason. So, since I've been recording myself running, I've been able to, like, watch myself and look at my gait. Here's the reason. So, this is the shoe is wide enough like the shoe is more than wide enough the toe box ample like perfect like i love it i really do i like to walk around and like i wore it yesterday casually love pure love but here's the thing and you can already see it and i just i just like started using it right right so okay let's see if i can get this on camera okay so see how this right here is already like pushing out 
this way and like you can even see it like in the toe area how like I'm pushing out this way I don't know how to angle it to where we can do this oh maybe this way here we go oh yes okay so see how like this material right in here like I'm kind of already starting to push it this way so I realized that when I run this is what happens this is called supination but and I don't supinate in real life like I, when I'm walking I don't supinate and so what supination is is when you your feet push out a little bit so because over pronation, your feet push in. Neutral, you're running like this. Um, and over and then supination, you're kind of coming in like a little bow leg. So that's how I run, turns out. Fun fact. So I noticed that I was like hitting like this a little bit. Like coming in like this on both sides. So both of my shoes are doing that. I don't know if you'll be able to tell from that toe box area. Like they're literally like, look at that. Like. And like they're already doing that and so I started feeling a hot spot right through the seam of it because my dang foot like that I, and I realized like I think that's why I like such roomy toe box shoes such roomy toe box shoes is because my I supinate a little bit so that seam even though it was wide enough once I got going on a run hot spot hot spot hot spot over and over and over and over again I actually have a blister now not a cute look I would show you but don't have a pedicure so maybe next time not really but yeah so hot spot it was it was disgusting it was terrible and I dreaded every moment of it so that's the only thing I will say or maybe was cut in a little bit too narrow for me I do love it for some athleisure vibes though I think I'm going to love it for some, like, casual wearing around, um, maybe, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I really was such a hype princess about it. I don't know why I was so ready for it, but I was, and so that was my review. Overall, do I love the shoe? No. Do I like the shoe? So, overall, do I love it? No. Do I hate it? No. I like it. I do like it. I just think that since I've ran in so many shoes, like, I already know what I like. And I don't love that shoe. But if you like shoes like Asics, if you like shoes like the old Triumph, if you like shoes um, like, a, like a Solar Boost or something like that, I think that you'll really like this shoe because it's that soft, plushy feeling. So if you like that, that's great. I just prefer a more responsive shoe. And to each their own. I like tomatoes. You may like tomatoes. And that's fine. I'm just letting you guys know. It's definitely more of a, of a soft shoe. So that's it for today. I hope you guys liked my video. And if you're watching it on the day that I post this. The shoes are released. So um, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. And yeah. See you next time. Bye.